Now, earlier this week, a hospital emergency room in Gatineau, Quebec, was forced to temporarily shut its doors because it just didn't have enough staff to remain operational. And uh, other hospitals in the province warned that they're at the same sort of breaking point as well. And then also this week, doctors wrote an open letter to the Quebec government highlighting the growing shortage of nurses in the province, warning that the entire system is on the brink of collapse. Nathalie Stake Doucette is the president of the Quebec Nurses Association. Nathalie, thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you so much for having me. So, Nathalie, at, at a time where we have spent the last year and a half talking about how important nurses are, medical health providers, caretakers, why are we seeing this major push in Quebec from the nurses? Why are they leaving the work? Well, COVID uh, exacerbated problems that were already there on the ground. Um, and so a lot of politicians and decision makers talk about a shortage of nurses, but I really do not like that expression because it's not a shortage of nurses. We've never had so many nurses in this province, registered nurses. Uh, it's just that there aren't any working conditions that are decent enough, that are respectful enough to convince nurses to stay within the public health care system. What, what do you mean by decent enough, respectful enough? Because that sounds like you guys aren't being treated well. Absolutely. And we've been talking about it for decades now. Um, you know, what's happened in Gatineau, I've, you know, the Quebec Nurses Association has been collaborating with nurses in Gatineau for years now on this issue. And we've tried to meet with MPs, we've met with decision makers, uh, proposing solutions to the looming crisis, which is no longer looming, it, we're in it. Uh, but this was a, a crisis that was um, to be expected. We knew about it, we've been trying to talk about it, make noise about it in every possible way, and we have not been able to have any politician or decision maker really um, have the political willpower to actually act on this which is, leads us to now where we're in an emergency crisis. We need emergency measures to help nurses stay within the healthcare system. And it's important for people to understand here, nursing isn't a vocation, which a lot of hospitals and politicians seem to think. We're not nuns anymore. Um, we're not sacrificial lambs. We're highly educated healthcare professionals. Uh, and we deserve to be treated as such. And so uh, when there's things like forced overtime, so forced overtime in Quebec, and I know it's the case in other provinces as well, is a major deterrent for nurses to stay, is when you come into work and you have no idea when you're going to leave. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you come in for a day shift and you might get forced to stay for an extra eight hours. So instead of leaving at 4 p.m., you have to leave at midnight. If you work night shift, instead of leaving at 8 a.m., you could have to leave at 4 p.m. and still have to work your regular shift. So this is as the physicians mentioned in their in their letter, uh, forced overtime has reached stratospheric levels. Um, and, you know, we're allowed to have a life outside of our work. We've given a lot during this pandemic. We have given everything we got. A lot of us got sick. A lot of us are burnt out. Um, you can't ask us to hold the weight of the world on our shoulders anymore. Uh, we need more than praise. You can't pay your rent on praise uh, or, you know, nice ditties, words. Uh, we deserve proper pay. We deserve working conditions that respect our basic human rights. Um, and all we want basically is to have what other workers and in other uh, industries and other healthcare professionals have as well. Uh, we're mm -hmm. Natalie, sorry, let me just jump in for a second because when you're describing that you're working incredibly long hours and you're stressed out and you're not feeling necessarily great at work and you, you're even feeling disrespected at times, then what does Absolutely. that do to the quality of the care the nurse can provide to a patient? Well, I mean, I gotta say nurses give, um, in general, incredible care. Uh, we've really, despite the uh, difficulties we've been faced with and the lack of respect, uh, we've still been able to provide as good care as we can. But of course, you know, when you keep augmenting the workload without any hope of changing anything in the future, that, that is very demoralizing for nurses. And a lot of nurses are saying, well, why should I stay here? Um, you know, there's no, we're not being listened to. We, our, our clinical judgment, our professional judgment is not being listened to in mm. terms of the conditions in which we exercise our profession. Um, and we're able to look at a, a unit, to look at our own work and say, 
this is dangerous. I shouldn't have nine patients. I should only have four. How do we organize so that we can get to that objective, which is not what's happening right now. We're just getting piled on, piled on, piled on, and at some point, we break. So then, Natalie, this takes us back to the beginning of the conversation where we were talking about a shortage of nurses, and you said, well, there's actually more nurses working now than ever before, but then wouldn't having more nurses solve the problem? Then you wouldn't have to work double shifts. You would have some more free time. You would be able to be more flexible with the kind of shifts that you need. So then isn't it an issue of shortage? No, because we actually have all the nurses that we need in Quebec, we just need to convince them to come and work within the public health care system. I see. So that's basically, uh, it's retention and attractivity of, it's basic management, right? If you want to attract quality workers, you have to give them working conditions that make because it worth their I just, while. Sorry, I just want to make sure that everyone at home also understands they're going to the private sector. Is that where... Exactly. I understand. Okay, and so at the private sector, is your sense that they will be treated... They are getting treated better there. They're getting paid better there. What, what's the difference? Well, it appears the main private sectors that a lot of nurses are going to is staffing agencies. So the government, uh, you know, doesn't really seem to want to give us any kind of pay raise or improve our working conditions. Uh, but the government will pay millions of dollars every year for staffing agencies to come and bring in nurses from the agencies. So when a nurse works in an agency, she has much more control over her schedule. Um, it's very rare that they're forced to do overtime. Um, and they can often choose where they work. So, you know, to actually have autonomy, uh, to be able to organize your life, to have a family, friends, things like that, that's, that's very, very attractive right now for nurses who, for the last year and a half, have not been able, allowed to take vacations, have been forced to do shifts that they can't really do, uh, that have been forced into all kinds of situations without even any real discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're willing to get through this pandemic together, but you can't. We're not. We're not beasts of burden. We're not cattle. So we're, Natalie, we're there to help and work together. I don't want to run out of time, but are you tempted to leave the profession? Has this taken its toll on you? Absolutely. <laughs> I left for a while, then I came back and. Um, now I'm back and I'm teaching and I work in a vaccination clinic with a fantastic team. So I'm happy where I am now uh, because I have a team that listens to me, uh, that listens to the nurses and the other healthcare professionals uh, that I work with. Um, but yeah, in hospitals, it's extremely difficult right now, extremely difficult. And everybody's in a difficult situation, but we need a commitment from health authorities and the government to move forward with this together and not just put more coercive measures, not just put more, increase the workload again, increase forced overtime. That's not the way to go. That's going to push more people out. And we have to stop with that mindset of coercion and forced overtime, because that's what got us to this point. Forced overtime is never a solution. It is always a problem. Okay, Natalie, we'll keep in touch and we'll see how the government responds. We'll be looking forward to that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Nathalie Stake-Doucette is the president of the Quebec Nurses Association.